China's housing market is ridiculous. When first arriving in China, I simply couldn't understand what was going on. Why were these poor quality apartments so expensive? I mean, rent was reasonable and pretty much what you'd expect, but the cost of these, for lack of a better word, concrete boxes in the sky was ridiculous. We all know that the average wage earner in China isn't making too much. And I can confirm this having worked with and lived with many Chinese people from all walks of life for over 14 years. Your average blue collar worker in Shenzhen, one of China's top four cities on par with New York, LA or San Francisco. And in fact, the city with the most expensive real estate in China. This is the city that I spent most of my time living in during the 14 years I was in China. In this mega city, the average blue collar worker is only earning plus minus a thousand US dollars a month. Most of my friends and contemporaries were lucky to be bringing in six to eight thousand RMB. And of course, they're the lucky ones with office jobs in the tech industry, etc. The service industry workers and those in lesser jobs doing delivery, cleaning jobs and the like were earning a pittance, usually offset by their workspaces, giving them free food and accommodation basically to offset the fact that they were being paid nothing. I know people that were earning a thousand RMB or less a month. Your average factory worker living in the dormitories earning around 3000 RMB a month. This is not a lot of money. And yet this city has the most expensive real estate in the entire country. So how can someone earning around 12,000 US dollars a year afford a house that costs over 9,000 US dollars a square meter? Let me put that to you again. A 90 square meter apartment, that's around 968 square feet, costs around 828,000 US dollars. That's getting close to a million bucks for an apartment the size of a living room. Seriously, and it's not even yours. It belongs to the government. You only have a 70 year lease and that's all. To top it off, it's poorly constructed and badly maintained. You see, these apartments drive China's economy. They're built fast, cheaply, and not built to last. In fact, one could consider apartments in China to be less of an investment and more of a consumable, as the chances of them actually surviving that 70 year lease are next to nothing. I mean, the entire city of Shenzhen is only 40 years old. And some of the apartments I've lived in and seen are in such poor shape that I doubt they'll be around much longer. In fact, this seems to be the plan. Knocking down old apartment buildings in order to build new ones is a big part of China's economic engine. It goes something like this. Local government leases land to a construction company for a massive amount of money. Said construction company plans apartments and has a fancy sales event. Apartments are then snatched up feverishly as investments before ground is even broken. Construction company shoddily constructs concrete blocks, completely unfurnished, and I mean unfurnished concrete unfinished walls, no flooring, no anything, just an empty shell. And people actually prefer it that way. Many apartments remain empty like this and for a good reason. The property prices keep climbing and holding onto it in a raw state like this means you can sell it for more later. You see, part of China's superstitions is that you don't want to inherit any of the previous owners bad luck, etc. It's just bad feng shui, especially down south. So if the previous owner put in tiled floors, did up the walls, painted the walls, installed plumbing, fittings, etc., the new owner would rip all of that stuff out anyway if they decided to live there. So you'll actually sell at a lower price if you've outfitted your apartment, even if it is in immaculate shape. That old stuff still needs to go. So these apartments are then later sold on for a big profit and the whole cycle repeats itself. Government leases land, construction company gets all the investments, puts up these quick, cheap, nasty high rises. People invest in them, sell them. And the average person doesn't just invest in one, but two or three apartments. And we'll get into that a little later. There is, of course, one very uncomfortable aspect to this whole cycle, and that is where the land comes from. Because if there are people living on that land, let's say historically, farmers and such, they usually get forced off either violently or through coercion. In fact, recently in Guangzhou, just this week, there was a big explosion that killed five people inside a village planning office. And this was because of land grabs. At least that's what people are saying on Chinese social media. 
the local village government was trying to evict people off of land and they do this by offering compensation but it's usually not enough usually involves force and coercion the local people don't like it you often see tussles and big sort of in the rural areas riots and things when it comes to this this kind of land grab stuff so they try to force them off the land well they do force them off the land and then they can lease the land to these construction companies anyway this does often result in tragedy like what happened in Guangzhou recently in the outskirts of Guangzhou near Panyu but you know back to the whole having decorated your house thing say that you have purchased and have decided to decorate your apartment what now live in it well that would be ideal right You'd think so, but no, that's not the way it goes. You see, property is the only surefire investment in China. The stock market has failed more than once and people are leery of investing in it. I was there and in fact predicted the massive stock market crash of 2015, which led to many people losing their family fortunes. The uh, stock market has basically exploded since November of last year. And this happens often in China. When somebody earns a little bit of money, you know, word gets out, ah, oh, you can make money through this, and everybody just blindly follows, and everybody's investing. And I mean, everyone, all my clients, uh, my friends, they all want to invest in the stock market. I keep trying to warn them that this is not a good idea because China had a similar thing in 2008, I think it was, where the stock market basically just fell apart because of the same reason. Everybody was just investing, thinking it's a sure thing, without realizing that there's actually a risk. So um, right now, the stock market is really just crazy. Um, if you happen to be in China, if you are Chinese, or if you know Chinese people, tell them to cool it off and watch out because I can see this being a bad thing in the near future. Uh, even the Chinese regulatory body has been warning investors to be careful because there's just too much investment going on. And by family fortunes, I mean extended family. People were borrowing from parents, uncles, cousins, you name it, and then they lost it all. And it was devastating. I personally know several people who were hit extremely hard and still have not recovered to this day. There were people committing suicide, jumping off buildings. Worst part was that these suicide videos were being shared on WeChat, you know, China's big social media. And it was not a happy time for China, I'll tell you that much. My point here is that people got burned by the stock market. Next. Peer-to-peer -peer lending schemes took the country by storm as another way of investing money. And that too crashed and burned spectacularly. And the government even had to resort to its tried and true thug tactics to keep social order. Confining people to their homes, putting pressure on family, employers, etc. to prevent mass riots and protests by people who had lost huge amounts of their savings. My wife actually being one of them. I had warned her that it was not a solid investment, but hey, in China you follow the herd. That's what people do. Your family, your colleagues, and everyone and their dog is doing something, so that means it must be good, and you should do it too. That really is a part of Chinese culture, and it translates to the housing as well. So, without another solid option for investment, the only solid platform for investing and making real money is real estate. I know several people who have made their fortunes simply by buying and selling apartments, many of them lucky to have got in early, but even late starters can see the value of their properties increase hand over fist year after year. This is the big issue. It has become a speculator's market. People buy houses not to live in, but to trade in for free money after a few years down the line. So why stop at one? Why not take out more loans? Why not take out loans from families, banks, and of course, if regulations prevent you from taking out another bank loan, just get a loan from a shadow bank, basically a loan shark. Regulations prevent you from buying another house in your name? No problem. Pay someone you know to put it in their name. Or one of the many creative ways people find to get around the regulations. Get divorced on paper, get a different ID in your mother's maiden name, pay a relative, use a fake identity, etc, etc, etc. If it can be done, it has been done in mainland China. Remember, there is no religion other than greed in the Middle Kingdom. But we're forgetting something here. How do we pay off these loans? I mean, the bank loan is one thing, but don't forget, most people have loaned money to front the deposit and get the bank loan in the first place. Yes, Chinese people save money well. I've actually learned a lot about saving money personally, having lived in China for so long. But say you own two apartments and live in one of them. If you're able to rent out the second one, 
Remember, since everyone is buying apartments, there aren't really that many people renting. The rent doesn't cover the mortgage in the slightest. For example, the last apartment I was living in was a small two bedroom apartment and I was paying 4,500 RMB rent. But the mortgage was around 20,000 RMB a month. So me paying rent was only covering a fraction of the mortgage. Take into consideration that the owner was paying mortgage on multiple properties and probably not earning a very good wage. So where is this money coming from? Savings can't be that vast, so I'm guessing friends, family and loans, no doubt. All because they know they'll make bank in a few years when they decide to sell. And you guessed it, when people sell, they use that money to invest in more property. Usually they'll find a, a more developing area where they can buy the property cheaper and buy more houses and sit on it for a couple of years and then reap the rewards later. And all of this for some concrete boxes in the sky. Remember, you don't get any land with this deal. You don't have a garden other than a big one shared in the apartment complex. It was always absurd to me and yet it is the only way for the average middle class citizen to invest money and make big returns on investment. This crazy cycle will of course continue. Each time the housing market starts overheating, the government steps in with regulations to cool it down a bit. This only lasts until people find a way around the restrictions of course, or if the economy starts to falter again, the government lifts restrictions or they offer low interest rates or some such thing in order to kickstart spending again and the cycle continues. But here's where things differ. The houses must come down and they will. They will be demolished and built again because building apartment buildings generate jobs, sales of raw materials, local micro economies for all the laborers that are bought in, the migrant laborers and they feed China's economy in many aspects. So knocking down and rebuilding shoddy apartment buildings is a wasteful but tried and true way to generate economic growth in China. And remember, in China, if you build it, they will buy. I hope you've learned a little bit of what goes on with the Chinese housing market and why it is so crazy in this video. Thank you to each and every one of you who watch my videos and support me that way. And a massive thank you to anyone who supports me on Patreon or anything else. I love you all. Can't wait to see you in the next one. And until next time, you know the drill. Unlike the crazy, unfair Chinese housing market, which is hitting Chinese people the hardest because you're an up and coming guy. You've got your first job. You want to get married and you need to get a house. What do you see in front of you? Just unrealistic ridiculous prices that are going to throw you into a lifetime of debt and sorrow. That's what you see. So unlike that nonsense, stay awesome.